The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Shall we lift up our hands and then look up straight here? In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, the church in Philippi was so dear to the heart of the Apostle Paul, especially because they partnered with him in ministry, as in giving and receiving. They were great supporters. We really bless him so much with, in the area of giving. They were great supporters. So when he heard that they were growing the Lord, he prayed and he thanked God. And I just want to take one part of his prayer and then maybe draw some, some lessons from there. Philippians 1 verse 6, please. Philippians 1 6. Being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, two things. Jesus has told the disciples, I go to prepare a place for you. When I finish, I'll come. So he's working up there preparing the new Jerusalem. When he finishes, he will come. Yet he's still working amongst us to present us a bride unto himself so that we will be fit for the new city. And the apostle Paul says that I'm confident that he, that is Jesus, who has begun a good work in you, you plural, you singular, will carry it to the completion until the day of the Lord. So God is working in us, fashioning us to become like his son, the image. Chapter 2, verse 12 and 13 says this. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God. Who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose? Let me just try and lift certain things up here. It says that continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. You have the salvation, but work it out. Then he says it is God who works in you to do two things, to will and to act. So that there is a working of the spirit in me. As you are listening to the word of God, he is working in you. And he's working in you to help you to will and to act. So that you are not just listening. The heart it shouldn't be the heart of stone. It should be pliable and flexible in his hands. So that as you listen and he's working in you, then he urges you so that you'll be able to take your will and follow what He's working in you. So that as he works in you, you also work it out. Yeah. Let me just say that again. As he works in you, you have to muzzle some courage and take your will and then work it out. See, the Christian life is that of spiritual courage. Hmm. That works out what he works in us. Let me say that again. The Christian life is that of spiritual courage that works out what he works in us. I'll come to the prayer from this point, but let me take a scripture from Ephesians chapter 4. So God works in us, but he doesn't do it alone. To this effect, the Bible says that from verse 11, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the people for the work of service 
So as God is working in us, pastors, teachers, elders are also working together with him. They are all working on us to become like him. Verse 12 is to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of who? Christ, the image, the Son. So he's working on us, fashioning us. Fashioning us. And the scripture is the mirror. As he's fashioning us, you look into the mirror, find out how Christ-like are you becoming. Pastors are helping. Evangelists are helping. Apostles are helping. Elders are helping. Bible study leaders. The choir is helping. All of us are helping. So that we, until we become, we have the fullness of the measure of Christ in us. So that when you speak, you are like him. When you walk, you are like him. When people see you walk, they have to come out. So what manner of human being is this? If people see you as ordinary, then you are not like Jesus yet. That is the man who will eat with the Peters. And then he still marveled them. I mean, he, they are in a boat. There's a great storm. The man is fast asleep. They woke him up. He just did that. He said, peace be still. And the storm will cease. And everything goes calm. People say, ah, what manner of man is this? Nicodemus went to him by night. And he says, I know you don't come from here. Yeah, I know you, because those of us who come from here, we don't behave like you do. Brothers and sisters, we are from above, and we must wear that. one. People should see us and say, what manner of man is this lady? What manner of man? So instead of becoming like them, let them learn to become like you. So he's working on us. Works within, and others are helping him to work out so that we become like Jesus. The Apostle Paul says this in Colossians 1. Colossians chapter 1, and verse 28. He is the one we proclaim, that is Jesus, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom. Now, because God is working in us, Ephesians says he gave us apostles to also work on us until we become like Christ. So one of the apostles is describing how he worked. He is Paul. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we, he didn't take himself out. Even though he's an apostle, he says we. Because he is also a Christian. And he belongs to the church. The people shouldn't be like Christ and he shouldn't look like Lucifer. So he says we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I, apostle, strenuously contend with all the energy of Christ which so powerfully works in me. So that he is presenting everyone fully mature to become like Jesus Christ. That is the ultimate goal of the church. And it is this church that will be caught to meet him in the air. Some people are teaching some doctrine. And it sounds so good for young people that your salvation is paid. So they are telling you, once you are saved, it's okay. So you can go about doing everything. Moses said, and challenged God in the Old Testament, if you will not take your people, then blot my name from the book of life. That gives me the impression that our names can be effectively blotted from the book of life. The one who wrote it, he can take it out. He is Lord. 
This is not to scare you. But this one is to whip your love for him. To want to become like him. To this end, mobilize a church for prayer. So that we have to pray that God, let us become like him. Or you don't think we should be doing that here. So the kind of prayer we pray, sometimes we pray amiss. We forget the important thing. It's all about what we eat and wear. But we have forgotten the goal of the church. To become like him. Let's listen to the apostle Paul pray for the church. Ephesians chapter 3. I'll start from verse 15. Verse 14 will make it more meaningful. For this reason I, Paul, knew before the father from whom every family the old NIV says, from him the whole family, in heaven and on earth, derives his name, the whole family. God has a family, some are in heaven, some are on earth. Those of us who are not dead and we are here on earth, if you die, you join the family in heaven. So there's a part of the church in heaven and there's a part of the church here. That is why he said that the whole family derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you. That is the church. He's praying. He's not teaching them. Now, remember that when he was teaching them, he says that the end result is that Christ will be produced in them. The end result is that Christ will be formed in you. And now he's praying. This one is prayer, not teaching. He says that, let's, let's take it from 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner man. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the lost holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And I like the verse 19. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. When he was teaching, he says that until you are full of the fullness of the measure of Christ. And when he was praying for the church, he said, God, I'm praying for them. Till they have become full of the measure of God. So you see that we need to pray that God will work out certain things in us. So that we will become like Jesus Christ. Galatians 4, verse 19. My dear children, for whom I am again in pains of childbirth, until what? Christ is formed in you. My dear children, I am in pain. I'm groaning, praying, asking that you be mature. He says, until Christ, that image, is formed in you so that you are the same another. That is where we are all going. That is the goal of the church. It is not enough to be screaming and shouting in church as we have been doing these days. I think what I'm saying is clear. And I want all of us to desire that. He's teaching us to become. God is working in us to become like Christ. The apostles are supposed to teach us to become like Christ. And he, they are praying us to become like Christ. Until Christ is formed in us. One of them called Epaphras. Was an intercessor for the church. And this is what Paul said about him. Colossians. Chapter 4, from verse Epaphras, who is one of you and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends greetings. He is always wrestling in prayer for you, that you may stand firm in all the will of God, mature and fully assured. I vouch for him 
that he is working hard for you, for those in Laodicea and Hierapolis. What kind of work is that? Prayer. He says he's working hard for you. Let me just close this one. And then look at me closely. I've said that there used to be two classes of people. You were either a Jew or a Gentile. But through Jesus Christ, whoever believed as a Jew or a Gentile forms a new community called the church. It is this church that now belongs to Christ or to God. His purpose for the church is to become like Jesus. That is the ultimate goal. And it is this kind of Jesus-like people who will be caught up to meet him in the air. For this reason, he himself works in us to will and to become like him. Whilst he has employed ministers to also co-labor with him so that we will become like him. And we are also supposed to pray so that we will become like him. Until you get to that fullness of the measure of Christ, none of us have arrived yet. That is where we want to go. And when you become like him, people will look at you. So what manner of girl, lady, brother, boy, gentleman are you? When you pray, hmm, you participate in the divine nature. Prayer is not primary for asking and receiving. When some people will pray, they pray, God, give me this every day. Give me. But prayer is not give me. Prayer is to have fellowship with the Spirit. And that one, Peter is saying that you are participating in the divine nature. So that when you are praying, you are moving into the divine nature, into God. And God is dissolving himself into you. Until he takes your weakness and you have his strength. Until you are changed into that image. So prayer is not just for sure. Otherwise, the Bible will not say, pray without ceasing. How many years do you take to ask you? How many hours do you take to ask for a husband or a wife? No. How many hours? But prayer is fellowshipping with the Spirit where you participate in the divine nature. As we wait for him, the Bible says, they that wait for him. Their strength will be renewed. They will mount out of wings like an eagle. They will run. They will not get tired. Because they have exchanged their strength with his strength. And our face will not just shine. The way we walk, the way we talk. People will say, that, ah, where do you come from? Then you tell them that I'm a heavenly Ghanaian. So God bless us all.